Alrighty, welcome to Code.org Unit 7, Lesson 3, the Netflix uh, Navigator version of the uh, practice problems. Uh, we scraped and clawed and made it through 4B. Um, at this point, uh, this is probably going to be the quickest video I ever do because I have spent an hour and a half going through this and have finally realized that this is completely confusing. The directions make no sense. The values you're supposed to check when you do it correctly don't actually check out. Uh, so if you are a new teacher, do not assign this to your students. Um, if you're an experienced teacher, um, if your students have ticked you off, perhaps you assign this to them. Um, if you're a student that has been assigned this, I am sorry. Um, that said, what I have chosen to do, um, and I'll try my best to kind of explain what's going on with it so I'm not just kind of showing you an answer, um, is explaining a little bit of the why behind this, but th this is insane. Um, I do not know how they expect students who are new to coding to read these completely confusing directions with very little context and be able to generate what is expected. Um, the ramen app, I apologize for calling you bad. Um, this one takes the cake. So um, what they want us to do, and I can certainly explain that, they want a filter that will take the index values that we stored based on the genre, right? So we uh, previously created a filter by genre, so we wanted the user to pick a genre. Once they picked a genre, then they'll have the option to select a year, uh, or not a year, but a kind of a time frame. And what this filter is supposed to do is take, if we go to our data set, um, we're kind of moving multiple columns here. So when we filtered by genre, we went through this entire list of all these Netflix movies, and we did a comparison. If the genre or something in the genre matched up, we pulled the index. Again, this is an ID, not the index, so it's minus one from this. And then we kind of have a list of those indices. Well, what we want to do now is filter by the release year, and if those values are matching, we then want to pull the title and store that in a list and be able to return that list. Um, that is what we want to do. Now, let me start with what is wrong. Um, first of all, the way they chose to go about this with the year button is that the year button, if you go through and in the directions they're talking about this crazy thing, like this filter Y something or another, um, cycle Y value, well, Y value, pixels Y. Um, what they have done is they've created this crazy thing that is moving, um, and notice it says image height is 36 pixels high. What they have done is they have embedded in their design view, um, they have masked this. There's actually an image that has all of the different year options, and depending on as it cycles through, it kind of slides up and down. Um, and allows you to click based on something. That is completely confusing. A, um, I, I know they were going for the aesthetic. They're trying to make it more sleek, and I, I do get that. But for the sake of beginning students, a drop-down list would have been much easier and much more appreciated by teachers everywhere. Um, so that whole thing's thrown in there. So the one thing that is also uh, very aggravating to me is right here it tells you the parameter is filtered index values. That is incorrect. Um, that should be the argument that you pass through, and this is like the third or fourth time on uh, the Netflix Navigator where they've mixed up the word parameter and argument, and they do it right here. Again, right here where it says parameter needed here, that is a function call. You don't put a parameter in a function call, you put an argument in a function call, and the argument passes through the parameter. I digress. Um, so what we need to have right here though, where it says parameter needed here, I guess that matches up with that, but this, it should say argument in line 80, um, because how you're supposed to guess where, uh, this should be filtered index values. So what that will do 
is there's a variable called filtered movie titles. It is going to run this filter by release function. The filter by release function is going to pull the stored filtered index values and it's going to cross reference the index uh, index indices that were saved from the data set and then it's going to filter again okay at this index in our main netflix data table we are just looking at the indices that had the correct genre then we're checking okay does the year match up and if it does that movie title will be added to a list that's what's going on that's what they want to happen but their way of going about do this makes you go crazy um so from this point forward what i am going to do against my better judgment and i hope i do not uh, get in trouble for this but as a teacher i believe in sharing information and um if anybody is having to do this as i said bless you um this filter where was it so we did filter by genre filter by release uh, as you can see, this is where I'd kind of started and I was trying to follow through. Um, you are going to have to create a for loop. I was even getting confused with what the parameter was. This is actually just going to be, um, because I put that as a parameter. They had list here. We can just use list because the list may vary and that does make sense. Um, but again, if you're literal like I am and you are trying to follow directions like a good little boy or girl um, or whatever uh, your um, identity is there, um, I would have plugged that in. Um, we leave that at list. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to example solution because this is going to be a lot of typing. Um, so my students, other, uh, feel free to pause the video. This is the solution set they provided for the filter by release. And this is a hot mess. So they did filter by release. They're using a list as a parameter. We had the temp list. And then they have this thing about if year index, um, which is a variable, if it is zero, that, and that's what lines up with this image and the choice and all of that, so that's why they have it. Um, so it's another way of user choice. Again, a drop down menu would have been much easier. We could have done a get input and all sorts of good stuff, um, or get text, um, or get number, sorry. Um, but that's kind of what this is. So if that year index is zero, that means the selection was before 1990. If it's one, then it's from 91 to 99 and so on. So we have to do a logical operator to say that if going through the Netflix year uh, list at the given index, if that is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to 1990 and the year index is zero, then we're gonna add that title um, at the given end. So what this is doing also is saying index is a temporary variable we're having to create that is storing from the parameter list, um, which will be our filtered uh, genre list, but that's gonna change throughout the program. So it does make sense to use this as a parameter, that part um, I, I do get and made sense um, because that will change. Um, but whatever is stored there, um, that's kind of getting plugged into index because we need the exact index from the Netflix year list and it's not going in order through that list. And the reason we use a parameter here is because the length of the list is going to change and we want to make sure it has flexibility. So it's just a process of kind of copying and pasting. Um, you append item. If that's not the case, then we check, okay, um, was the user choice? Um, you know, the year index right here is at one. So again, we're kind of checking, okay, now we got 91 to 99. So now we have to do like this complicated, um, kind of double, triple logical operator where we're saying, okay, is you know, whatever's at the Netflix, um, your index, is it between 91 and 99? And the way we do that is it is both greater than or equal to 1991 and also at the same time less than or equal to 1999 and that year index variable based on the user choice was one and that is just repeated um, i will stop talking for a moment um, at this point you may feel free to probably just pause for a moment and whatever you need to do to copy um, godspeed um, i will pause myself a moment and then scroll down
Okay, the last thing is a uh, return of temp list, and this would kind of pull what you needed. Um, so at this point, I did go a little bit longer in this video than I intended. Um, I did want to at least explain the why. I will just be honest, I did not have it in me to manually type all of this. That would have taken too long. Um, you came here to get some help. Um, so I feel like by explaining it this way, hopefully it has been of some help to you. But I cannot stress this enough. If you are a teacher and you are new to this in particular and your kids are new, uh, do not give them this assignment. It is going to make them fear computer science. And um, this was not a good call to plug this in right here. So that said, um, that will conclude this point of it. We will wrap up with a, another video to put the finishing touches on.